Chapter 6, Section 5, Determinants and Kramer's Rule. Um, I want to let you know that I'm going to keep this lesson shorter rather than longer. Um, I'm going to show you how to solve um, a system of two equations using Kramer's Rule. You can also use Kramer's Rule to solve a system of three equations, but I'm going to limit this discussion to systems of two equations only, just to keep this a little bit shorter. All right, let's start start with the definition. Given any two by two matrix, call it matrix A, and let it be um, let it have entries A, B, and C, D. The determinant of A um, is denoted using this notation, D, E, T, and then parentheses A, determinant of A. Or this is another way to write determinant of A. Now this is very important. Uh, these are not brackets. These are like vertical like kind of like absolute value bars, okay? And that's our way of saying you're taking the determinant of a matrix A. If you use brackets, that's matrix notation. If you use these vertical bars, that means determinant notation. But it's very simple. The determinant of a, a two by two matrix is equal to AD minus BC. So A times D minus B times C. The determinant of a two by two matrix is a real number. So when you find the determinant of a two by two matrix, you're basically finding a number, a number that's associated with that matrix. All right, here's our first example. Find the, the determinant or evaluate the determinant of each of the following matrices. Here's the first one. This is the matrix and you wanna find the determinant, all right? So here's our notation, okay? Our notation for our work is, use these vertical bars here, and it is the um, determinant of this two by two matrix. Okay, that's how you write. This is the, t the notation that you use. All right, folks, this is basically what you're doing, okay? AD minus BC, so it's three times seven minus five times two, all right? Which gives us 21 minus 10. The determinant is 11. Done. That's it. Okay. We're gonna use the determinant later on in this lesson when I uh, when I develop Kramer's rule for you. At this point, it's just find the determinant and that's it. So eleven is the real number that is associated with this two by two matrix. Let's do um, a couple more. Here's the next example. Um, find the determinant of this two by two matrix. All right, so the determinant, this is how you write it with vertical bars, right? And it is found by evaluating AD minus BC. So it'll be zero times negative nine minus, minus um, one times negative six, okay? So be careful with your signs, please. So it'll be zero times negative nine, which is just zero, minus, and then negative six times one. All right, like that. Okay, so this is zero, and then you got two negatives here, which make a positive, so then it's positive uh, six there. So then your determinant is six. Six is the real number that is associated with this matrix. All right, cool, let's move on. Okay guys, here's Kramer's rule for a system of two equations. All right, first of all, if you're given a linear system of this form, so this is um, a sub one x plus b sub one y is equal to c sub one, and the second equation is a sub two x plus b sub two y is equal to c sub two. First of all, notice that your variables are x and y. The reason for these subscripts is just so that we know which coefficient belongs to which equation. So a sub one and b sub one are the variable coefficients for the first equation. C sub one is the constant for the first equation. A sub two, b sub two are the variable coefficients for the second equation. And c sub two is the constant for the second equation. Remember when you're asked to solve a system of equations, linear equations, you're, ask, you're really being asked where do the two lines intersect? Find the ordered pair, x comma y. Well, according to Kramer's rule, x is equal to this quotient, d sub x over d, and y is d sub y over d. 
Well, that's simple. That's pretty straightforward, except what, are the, what do these capital D's represent? What does that mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. Capital D is the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix. D sub, a, yeah, D sub X is the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix. And D sub Y is the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix. To remember all of this, this might be helpful. D is just the determinant of your coefficient matrix. Look at a sub 1, b sub 1, a sub 2, b sub 2. Those are all your variable coefficients. So this is basically your coefficient, the determinant of your coefficient matrix. D sub x is the same thing except the constants have taken the place of your x column, right? Of your uh, coefficients a sub 1 and a sub 2. Your constants have taken the place of that column. D sub y is similar. It's the same thing as, as D. D sub y is the same thing as D, except your constants have taken the spot of that second column, which is your y column, okay? So let's do it. Let's use this rule. Okay, everybody, here's our system. Um, I do want to highlight something as we go forward. Man, we have so many different ways now to solve a system of equations. You can graph each of these linear equations and find where the two lines intersect. You can use a substitution method. You can use the elimination method. You can use matrices. Um, you can use uh, the inverse of a coefficient matrix, which is what we just learned in the previous lesson. So how many ways is that? Let's see, graphing, substitution, elimination, matrices, the inverse of a coefficient matrix, and now Kramer's rule. This is six different ways to solve a system. How great is that? All right, so in order to find x comma y, the ordered pair at which these two lines intersect, um, we need to find three things, capital D, capital D sub x, and D sub y. Now remember, D is the determinant of the coefficient matrix. So here I go, what are your coefficients? Three, negative four, two, five. Vertical bars, right? Because we're finding the determinant. Now, we just did this in the previous example. So this is, the determinant is 3 times 5 minus, be careful with that sign, minus negative 4 times 2, right? So 3 times 5 minus negative 4 times 2, like that. So D is equal to... Uh, let's see if I can squeeze it up here. I can, yeah. Uh, let's see. Positive 15, and then this is going to be plus 8, right? 15 plus 8, 23. All right. So all we have to do is now find d sub x and d sub y. You guys, um, I just want to make sure I, I... I know I said this when we were face-to-face -face on campus uh, in class, but I just want to reiterate. Um, I keep track... I hope you keep, you're keeping track of what numbered example I'm at. I don't know if you even noticed, but we went from example one to example four. These examples are coming from your online textbook. And so if ever you want to see this example again, if you want to um, just compare it to the book, you can always look up this example because I'm labeling them. All right. So yes, I skipped examples two and three. And I did that intentionally because I'm making this lesson a little shorter. So this is example four because I'm, I'm matching up with the book. Okay, let's find d sub x and d sub y. Now, d sub x is going to be the same thing as d of what we just found, except in that first column right here where the 3 and 2 are, basically the x column right here, 3 and 2, you're going to replace that with your constants, 1 and 16. But other than that, it's the same, okay? So it'll be 1 times 5 minus, I always want to stress that minus symbol, uh, negative 4 times 16. Okay, I can show that. 1 times 5 minus negative 4 times 16. All right, what is this arithmetic? This is 5 plus 64. 5 plus 64 is 69. Cool. Let's find d sub y. D sub Y will be the same thing as capital D, except the Y column, the second column, 
which belongs to your y's, will be replaced with your constants 1 and 16. All right? And then evaluate the determinant, AD minus BC, like that, okay? So let's find this real number, 3 times 16 minus 1 times 2. So this is 48 minus 2. 48 minus 2 is 46. Cool. We have everything we need, you guys, to find the solution. Let me just move the screen up a little bit. All right. Now here we go. X is equal to D sub X over D. So then it is 69 over 23. Y is equal to D sub Y over D. This is pretty great, isn't it? The short, it really is a short way of finding the point of intersection. So this is uh, 46 over 23. Um, so then our ordered pair, we should try to simplify this as well uh, as we write down our final answer, okay? Our final answer will be uh, 23 and 69. You know, 23 is prime, and it goes into 69 three times. So this fraction will just simplify to the number 3, comma. Uh, 23 will go into 46 twice, right? So then this is the point of intersection. Isn't that awesome, awesome you guys? This system is consistent, consistent because it has a solution. And this is the point at which those two lines cross. Really, when you get the hang of this, this is really great. All right, let's go. Let's look at another example. All right, you guys, here's our brand new system. And we want to solve this system using Kramer's rule. All right, find D d sub x, d sub y, all right? Here we go, d. d is the determinant of the two by two matrix that is filled with just your coefficients. So the, basically the determinant of your coefficient matrix. So your coefficients are eight, three, four, negative nine. d sub x, we'll figure out what that is in just a second. d sub x is the same thing except the first column is replaced with your constants, 3 and 5. The second column stays the same. D sub y is the same thing as D, except that the second column is replaced with your constants. Okay, guys? All right, we're ready to figure out the determinants, all right? So it'll be 8 times negative 9 minus um, 3 times 4, like that. Okay, I barely can squeeze that in there. All right, so what is this? 8 times negative 9 is negative 72 minus 3 times 4 is 12. So negative 72 minus 12 is negative 84. Cool. Let's go to the next one. 3 times negative 9 minus 3 times 5. Just trying to do this so you can still see the numbers. All right, 3 times negative 9 is negative 27 minus 3 times 5, which is 15. Negative 27 minus 15 is negative 42. Cool. Let's go to D sub Y. Man, all of this is arithmetic, isn't it? 8 times 5 minus 3 times 4. 8 times 5 is 40 minus 3 times 4, which is 12. 40 minus 12 is 28. Cool. Let's set up our quotients now. Let me move this up. Okay. X is equal to D sub X over uh, D, which is negative 42 over negative 84, um, which simplifies as a positive number. 42 goes into 84 twice, so this is 1 over 2. y is d sub y over d. The denominator is the same, but the numerator is 28. So this is a negative number, and we should simplify this. I think, does 28 go into 84 evenly? I think three times, doesn't it? 
Um, let's see, 3 times 8 is 24. Write the 4, carry the 2. 3 times 2 is 6, plus the 2 that you carried is 8. Yeah, perfect. 3 times. So then this uh, goes uh, in 1. Uh, 28 divided by itself is 1. Uh, 84 divided by 28 is 3. There we go. Um, so the answer is 1 half comma negative 1 third. That's the point at which those two lines cross. Man, that's great. I'm so glad we're using this method and not like graphing or anything like that because then we'd have to graph fractions, you know? So this, um, this Kramer's rule is really great. I hope you're liking it so far. All right, you guys, I'm going to end this lesson here. It's a short 15-minute lesson on Kramer's rule for solving systems of two equations only. Now, again, if you're interested, which I hope you are, this rule applies um, to systems of three equations, so I would invite you to read uh, your textbook for that. But I'm going to focus on uh, teaching you guys systems of two equations only when it comes to Kramer's rule. All right? All right, you guys, I'll catch you later in the next lesson.